Hi, Julie. How's it going? Hi, Joyce. Nice to see you. Good to see you. It's been a while. How are you doing today? <laughs> I'm very good. I'm very good today. I've got my virtual trees going on back here, which is what I do. You've got a plant as well behind you. Yes, I do. It's specifically one that um, left alone for a month will still survive. <laughs> <laughs> one of those. I wish I could say the same thing about my children, but I have to feed them every day. <laughs> <laughs> We're not there yet. We're not there yet. It's been quite rainy in Houston where I'm located, and I know you've been traveling a bit. Remind me, um, where in the world are you located for now? Uh, I am in Los Angeles. We're okay. in my home base. My, and uh, yeah, very much happy to be back, but I have been in Australia and uh, been traveling a bit. But this is all about you. So I'm really happy that you're yeah. here. Um, just before we get into it, let me uh, remind everyone why we're here today. Welcome to the Creative Entrepreneur Podcast where I interview leading female executives and digital and creative disruptors and entrepreneurs who give me their insights and tactics and strategies on how they become successful passion leaders. And it's all part of my platform, which I know our guest speaker has been part of called The Creative, where we're providing a lot of content, a lot of coaching, a lot of connection, a lot of creative resources to kind of light a fire in your heart and soul about becoming a passion leader and achieving anything that's impossible, which leads me to today's guest and the topics that we're going to talk about today. Joyce Roos is in the house. I'm so glad you're here. Thanks, Julie. <laughs> Thanks for the intro. <laughs> and, um, you know, I will say that, and for our listeners and watchers, our viewers, I've, I've had the enormous uh, gift and opportunity to get to know Joyce lately as she's been part of uh, various activities in the creative. But let me tell you all a little bit about her, and then I'm sure she'll go in and tell you a lot more than what I'm going to say. But I would say that she is a, a really true entrepreneur, a woman who has really been honing in on her fire, her vision, her passions. And she's been able to realize that in the real world through her career path. It's very, very exciting. Um, Joyce drives global factory performance excellence. Oh, I want to see what that's all about. And is a champion of operations, engineering and enablement LACE, which is a lean agile center of excellence. Um, she works at HPE. She'll tell you a little bit about that and leads program management there as well as Intel, which is a prior company. She's been at so it's a lot of tech. So I love that. And she's got a lot of supply chain skills across consulting engagements, manufacturing, supplier partner management, customer quality and channel sales. Actually, I met Joyce at a channel a channels um, conference, more on that later. Um, and she's really into business process improvement, financial efficiency, solving problems for the business. There's a lot here. Um, she's a team builder. She works in the trenches. She rolls up her sleeves. She's the go-to of many things. And what I know about her and what I'm really excited to tap in today about is she shows up in her workplace as the leader that she is for everyone. And so what I want to learn from Joyce today and what I'd love her to share today is her insights about how she not only acts and influences others as a leader in the workplace but also how she's advancing her own career moves through the way she shows up in the workplace this has got some really cool things that I want you all to know about how she's like applying that diligence and focus in her learning and education and in her leadership education because we we never stop learning just a lot more about that so welcome to my podcast. Thanks, Julie. That was quite the introduction. My breath honestly is taken away now that you say it. Um, I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> super, super happy. So so tell us a day in the life of Joyce Roos. 
Yeah, let me let me maybe backtrack a bit. Um, you know, right now I lead a global team and we are really focused on metrics enablement. There's new factories coming online from, you know, just the acquisitions our company has done over the years, you know, working with our external partners as well as all the strategic initiatives. I'm a PMO leader. Um, this is what I'm passionate about, live this day in and day out. I if you asked me even five, six years ago, there is no way I would have imagined being here today. So it, it's been quite the journey and I love what I do. Hmm. That's amazing. So what do you do? Well, you know, I am really good at addressing unplanned issues, um, hmm. so emerging supply chain, whether that's coming from our customers, suppliers, or something new, just global events. How do we address pivot? Uh, make changes. I, I really especially love the agile methods. It's just a framework on how do we take these new requirements, adapt and keep delivering value to the business. When when something's your passion, every day is just um, a, another day for a challenge. And I, I love showing up. That's a wonderful, you know, showing up in the workplace can come in different forms. Sometimes, you know, we, we arrive, we just do the job that we're asked. And we just do it, you know, we just waiting to clock out, so to speak, you know, you don't strike me as that person. You, you strike me as someone who over delivers. And I'd love to get behind that mindset. Like what makes you tick in that front? Yeah, that's a good question. And I may, you know, take you take the audience back. So, yeah. you know, I'm originally from California and you know, graduated in 2008, it was during the recession and was thrilled for my first opportunity at Intel, went to New Mexico, um, got deep into wafer fab process manufacturing, learning all about CPUs. And there, you know, met my husband who was in the military. Hmm. So I knew he was the one for me. And we transitioned from military to civilian life. Moved to Houston. I did not know anyone, um, you know, had two wonderful boys, but essentially had had a moment to start from a blank slate again and had to reimagine who I was. And at the time it, you know, life has a way of humbling you. So I went through the experience of realizing, wow, I need to be valuable to to an employer and the way to do that is I really need to focus on my growth. So, so that was the turning point for when I became obsessed with, you know, continuous learning, improving and, and networking really. Yeah. I've, I've really noticed that in you and in, in how I've gotten to know you, like there was a turning point even recently where you've known a lot of things in your workplace, but then you said, then you started getting really curious about agile. <laughs> so, you know, for those who are listening, it's not like Joyce said, well, yeah, I think we should bring in some agile methodologies here. Let me just go and get a trainer on that. No, she literally did the highest course you could do. She finished the course in like, I don't know, a week. Then she went on to other courses and then she's already built out the strategy for the company in order to transform to agile or scaled agile. And then she's implementing it. And it's like, I don't know, it's been like a minute. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, between you and me, I wish it were faster. It, it feels slow, but uh, I'll take the momentum that we can get. And then as of today, um, we have plans to train 40 team members worldwide and, um, and, and continuing, you know, the growth and the development and of that type of problem solving. It's another framework. Mm -hmm. I, I do it for me. I need to role model what I believe in. And I absolutely, every chance I get, um, I ask my team to prioritize time for themselves to go develop. Um, it's just so important. Yeah. I love that about you. And it's a good takeaway for all of us like, as we, are, as we all manage and lead and get work done and, you know, deliver our our goals for the company and for ourselves it's sort of we have to be the student in life as well we're, we're always learning and so you know going back to the concept of your approach to leadership and how you show up what I'm learning from you and what I'd love you to share is and I don't know where this came from in you or but you 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 go above and beyond what is that where does that come from in you 
Originally, when I started back in the workforce, I wanted to run away as far as away from the feeling of feeling like, you know, there was a moment I felt my career is over. Um, mm -hmm. I really felt that. I really believe that. And, you know, that that's not a good mindset to be in, but that that's just where I was. Um, I just kind of looked at what was ahead of me, um, you know, the cards that I was dealt and you know, I faced so many rejections. I had so many interviews, so many final interviews where they look at you right, right in the eye and they're like, no, not a good fit. And I just thought I need to run away from the feeling that I'm feeling right now and make myself as valuable as possible. Mm. Um, and, and part of that is you know, you, you say yes to the opportunities. I started saying yes to pretty much everything, trying everything, soaking everything as a sponge, meeting everyone, um, you know, see how I can help be of value, make connections. Um, really, it stemmed from a deep fear of that situation I, I was in. But, you know, through working with the creative, the, the nice thing is you can rewrite your narrative and it's a new story. And, you know, that served me to get to, you know, my, my first role. And, and then quickly, I'm thankful I had a really supportive leadership team. They, they saw, you know, just the potential and really took a chance on me. So I started back in, in quality engineering, and then moved into project management. From there, started leading teams mm -hmm. of project managers. Uh, great. Oh, let's go right there. So uh, first of all, I just want to acknowledge um, you said a lot there about, uh, you said a lot, but uh, one of the things that I really called out to me was overcoming fear and just focusing on showing value. So getting over your own self of like, I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough. But then what you did is you kind of, you reinvented and said, look, I'm not going to go with that however they don't want me for that job I'm just gonna just show the value the way I can and and then I love your saying rewrite your narrative that to me is just fabulous like I loved that um that was that was amazing um so that we can rewrite our story that we can rewrite our path and how we want to do things um I love it so yeah so you so you grew up in California you started uh, traveling with your husband like what was your kind of first like formal career that you felt like okay I found my place and tell us a little bit about that that's an interesting question Julie I haven't thought of it um, I've I've had so many roles and, and jobs growing up from you know teaching second graders English as a second language website development um, wore many hats um, I would say now, um, so much before you, you just kind of take what's presented to you and, and people keep seeing your good work and they keep handing you more and, and you're working, 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 and you say, yes, I think that the turning point was for me when, you know, I, I looked up and think, you know, is this where I want to go? I, I never took the time to look up to where I was going. And the second thing was, you know, when I stopped waiting for permission to, to do something, especially with cross-functional leadership, uh, it takes multiple cycles of just showing up over and over and over again to get, you know, to get the support from cross-functional teams. I think those two things made me realize, you know, this is the role I was meant for, which is the combination of passion, people. I love working with people, you know, programs, PPP. Um, all <laughs> yeah, the PPPs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Preparation prevents poor performance and passion. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, so I would say now, I mean, early in your career, you're, you're, you're a sponge. Like your yeah. whole job is to be exposed to multiple things, see different parts of the business, get really good, be of value, be a subject matter expert. Um, and, 
at some point you're going to know what you're good at, you know, what your passion is. And that's when you really need to double down on, okay, this is, this is where I'm going to go now that I know those things. Yep. Yeah, totally. And I, I think I actually agree with you. And as I was asking the question, I kind of answered myself anyway, like when you're first starting out, you really are just trying things out, you know, and maybe you haven't, maybe we haven't found our Nirvana career yet. It's sort of like a, we're all a work in progress, right? But um, something that I think, I'm going to ask you a really hard question because generally my guests don't want to answer it because a lot of people are listening and watching. But I want to ask these hard questions because that's the essence of why I do this podcast. So this is called the Entrepreneur Podcast. It's for women or those who want to empower women in many different fashions to become passion leaders, leaders that are leaders and who are following what they love. So for you, for whatever you can share with us publicly, can you tell us a time or can you tell us some experiences as to where you felt like your leadership has been thwarted, whether it's based on your gender or just in general, it doesn't have to be gender related. Um, that, you know, there's something that I want to be open about. Um, there's moments where based on my gender, I had comments and I cried about it. I cried about it at work. Um, that experience, you know, really is the foundation of what what kind of, I want to be an inclusive leader. I want to make sure all voices are heard. And, and the situation, you know, I started in the manufacturing plants and, you know, I quickly observed that, you know, I would make the same recommendation as a process engineer, you know, my whole job was to look for things going wrong and put, you know, containments in place, statistical process control charts, work instructions, and, you know, was on call, you know, multiple for multiple shifts 24 seven. And I would be called in the middle of the night because, and asked over and over again, and I keep giving the same answer and be woken up repeatedly um, where, you know, just being challenged on the engineering standpoint, you know, comments such as, did you get this role because of affirmative action? That's the thing in the United States where, you know, I was, you know, perhaps selected, you know, solely just on my background. Mm -hmm. um, I know your audience have probably encountered that and it just, you know, at the time I didn't know how to handle it. So I cried. Mm. Um, but I quickly got connected with, you know, affinity groups such as the Society of Women Engineers and got mentors. And my first mentor told me it's okay to cry. Mm. Um, you know, kind of normalized it for me. So that's why I've been so passionate about resource groups that are focused on STEM, women representation, equity, inclusion, um, making everyone feel comfortable to show up to the whole self, you know, to work. And I've done that for multiple years, over 15 years from now. Yeah. I mean, thank you for sharing that. It's funny because I was reading your, you know, your bio to, to everyone and I was looking at your past and, and I mean, believe me, like, I, I could imagine that you have been like one of the few women in your workplace in some areas. Um, like I'm dealing with some consultancy work at the moment. It's a lot to do with logistics, supply chain and, you know, field ops. And, you know, there's not too many women doing that, getting in a truck and driving around and, 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 and putting things in places, right? So it's like, and I, I've been most cases the, the the only woman in in a c-suite or a board meeting or a you know leadership meeting I'm the one the the one there and not to say look I don't really actually I don't really care about pigeonholing the conversation around gender but as a leader I the stories that I hear from women from female leaders is there's always some kind of struggle and men have it too 
doesn't matter. There's all different kinds. But the, 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 the female struggle to me is all about what I've noticed a lot is about the glass ceiling. It's like cracking glass ceiling so that everyone understands your value. And I'm just kind of wanting to kind of dig a little deeper there, even with your area today, as much as you can share, like what are the areas that you feel you confront and how do you overcome them? so that we can all learn from that. How do you show up? I keep going back to that showing up in the workplace. Like, what are some of the things you do now that your role is expanding and you're doing different things that you, that help, you know, crack, crack that glass ceiling or ensure that there's a community in a space, safe space or allow you to be self-empowered so you can go off and run your agile moments, all of those kind of things. Yeah, um, that that's a really deep question, Jillian. Yes, it is. <laughs> Um, I, I still feel like I have room to grow and perhaps am not at the, at the point of cracking the ceiling. Mm. Um, regardless, it, it takes many people to be involved. Um, many allies, everyone rowing in the same direction. Um, I, I really focus on what I control. I really believe in mentoring people where they're at. Um, you know, specifically, you know, helping people realize what they have in themselves, their potential, um, you know, just these big things that they can do. They, they just really need to believe in themselves, um, giving opportunities to team members. Um, really, I, I focus on what I can control um, through our resource group. We had a group called Women Empowered. Um, it's a supply chain group. And it ended up being featured in a third party um, report called Gartner, just being best in class. And we did, we did things such as, you know, it, it was entirely voluntary. We were looking for advocates for allies. So things such as calling out microaggressions, um, you know, little things that might over time just kind of whittle away at people's confidence. Um, I posted <laughs> workshops for women just to build up their leadership. So whether that's storytelling for stakeholders, attracting, um, how do you gain the advocacy of sponsors that you need for those key projects? So there were multiple avenues. Um, I My primary focus was on advocacy and, you know, networking, getting out there. Your work doesn't show for yourself, you know, just stop mm -hmm. just working hard. You need to go tell the world about mm -hmm. it. Um, I. I try to focus on what I can control. I know there's other, you know, global legislative efforts too. And, and it takes us all rowing to really, really make a dent here. I love, I love that. And that's the kind of the meat and potatoes that I love to hear, like how you go about um, whether it's not cracking the glass ceiling or whether you don't overcome full of fears in the workplace or whatever you need to do. But like as a leader, as, as a, as a leader, growing and expanding because we're always growing as leader i love that you say that the thing that you can control are the things that you know for example advocacy i so many times whether i'm managing someone or i'm just sort of influencing and, and working with folks in the workplace i see a lot of people doing great work but they're not getting noticed and so they don't get the promotion or they don't get the or they or they just that people just feel like they're not achieving. So the, there's performance management that comes into play and it, it may have nothing to do with the fact, with their ability. It may have nothing to do with how many hours they're putting into it. It's the fact that their work isn't visible. So you said, just right there is amazing. And, and I even like, I'm, 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 I said so, something to someone yesterday, like you were working so hard and and it's a woman in the workplace and and she's like yeah i don't think you know the leadership knows how much i really do and we our team is is short staffed and everything and i said but you know do you send out executive executive reports do you do you create looms or do you create what do you do and like, oh, i don't know so like that's the work it's not so much the work she's doing every day it's how she shares and advocates so that people are aware and it's transparent and that uh, forms other great things like alignment in the workplace and trackability and accountability and velocity and getting things done. But I digress. So back to you. So tell me a little more about your advocacy. What are some of the things you do that others can learn from? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, so one thing I, I see that in many companies, you have these, um, you know, new hires that come and, and they're just trying to figure out, okay, I'm here. What's next? What's next? And we provided resources, you know, designed with three to five years in mind, think big, what can you do? You know, look at the re leaders around you, um, who inspires you. So we have you know, targeted resources just to help with designing the career um, based on your passions, what you're good at, what people um, say that, you know, you're known for. You take that all into consideration and, and then kind of after some time to think about it, um, figure out, you know, what's what's in it. And, you know, from there we can pair with mentors. That's one pillar of it. Another is networking. Um, I work in a global team. So, um, over the past two years, we've done 20 um, strategic hub face-to-face -face networking events where we connected employees with leaders. Mm. We will do things such as, hey, get prepared. You go read their bios, show up, be ready, you know, dress for this. I know you all work from home, but you're going to dress for this. Um, we also had virtual regional just to make it inclusive um, for those that are remote. Uh, so those are just some of the key things, just encouraging to people to keep networking. It's something I had had to do. It's a habit now. Um, you know, just kind of back to basics. These sound basic, but you know, they're, they're the reason why they're there and it's foundational. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. What's the next for Joyce? Like, where are you going next when you think about your own passion leadership and where you want to go, want to go as an entrepreneur in your own life? And I know you're balancing your life between work. We've been talking a lot about work, but you know, you do things outside of work and you've got a family and things like that. So what's next for you? Um, you know, the whole self is important to me. You know, as a mother of two young boys, seven and eight, we have activities literally every single day of the week. And, you know, I just love being able to prioritize that. It's such a meaningful time to me. Um, longer term, I'm so grateful for having the opportunity to not only um, see different functions, but lead a team. Mm -hmm. um, would love to continue in leadership. I'm exploring several areas in the transformation space for enterprise, which means different things. Um, and to me right now, that means, you know, Mado merges and acquisitions. Um, what does that look like? Integrating our processes together, whether that's, you know, the different IT systems down to um, the processes to manufacturing, um, just all the different parts of the supply chain from front end to the back end. I'm looking at places that really use scale agile, just processes that really depend on that, especially for PLs. How do we, you know, work with our business partners, the different regions, the different countries, and capture that business value regularly? And then lastly, you know, just product life cycle management, the whole cycle. So I'm just exploring a few areas of what that means to me. And, you know, one cool thing about, you know, where I work is, you know, just the chance to reach out to other, other areas and, and, you know, have a, have a coffee chat and learn more. Well, it sounds like you have, and I've noticed this about you, very clear and intentional in like where you want to go and what you want to do. And I love that you're building out, like, what does leadership mean to you? What areas you want to dive into more? Like, like I'm an Aries, so I'm a baby in the Zodiac. So everything to me is new. I all want to try new things all the time, right? And that's what I'm kind of sensing from you. Like you want to, you, you're going fresh into that area, but you want to get more into leadership. But it sounds like you're also very into community as well. That last thing that you just said, tell me a little, tell, tell us a little more about how you use community to advance your own education and, and, and network. Yeah, one thing I learned is, I'm a people person. I actually get energy from being in a team. I love to bounce ideas and, and see, you know, I, I love to learn from other people. And really at this point for where I'm at in my career, it's more so, you know, where do they see themselves? What growth opportunities can I provide them? Or, you know, who are the people that they care in their lives that, you know, kind of, you know, might need a, some help right now might need a, an encouraging phone call or a connection at this point um, I love to find out connect with people and see if I can kind of be you know connect 
hey, this area over here has this opportunity and you're looking to grow, you know, why don't you meet and, and make those connections? And, and this is pretty critical for what I need to do in driving cross-functional type of programs. You know, if we can align what needs to be done with someone that wants it, that's the ideal situation. So I'm, I'm all about networking so I can find out and see if I can make that happen. Yeah, that's great. So you're finding out what people need so you can solve a problem with a solution yeah. and, but also it takes a team it takes a village to do anything yeah. so we you know we can we can know we can't do anything on an island we kind of have we need to act as a team to get to get things done or to transform and change change management is is very much about team effort um it's great well let's uh, shift just for a little bit and then we'll come back and do some uh, sort of golden nugget type things did you get a chance to listen to some of the music Yes, I did. <laughs> I I wanted to point out one that especially resonated with me, if that's okay. Yeah. So I just, 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 just to brief for everyone. So every, pretty much every podcast that we do, um, I not only talk about leadership, but I switch gears and talk about a passion, which is music. So I have a whole history of being a recording artist and a touring artist under Jilly Moon. So I threw Joyce into that world for the first time. And I'm, what did you find? Um, I just want to say that I love that part of you, the artist part of you. Um, I, I played piano and, and the bass and the guitar for quite some time. You took it up to another, another launch and just so you know, my favorite song that you shared as part of your portfolio was Falling, actually. Oh, you like Falling. And you like, you saw the music video with the whole dancing? Yes. Yes. It was very artistic. Um, I love, you know, dance, down tempo type of music. It felt like you were in flow, in a trance. And especially since it was talking about like falling in love with someone or falling in love with something that you love and how you feel about it. Um, I was cracking up. There's one verse in there that talked about, you know, that diamond in the rough. And <laughs> what it means to me is, you know, you recognize someone's potential and you want to go with them, um, even though they're not there yet and you're going to go together. So I just, I just loved you know, those couple things kind of wrapped around and, and the dancers were fantastic in the video. <laughs> oh, awesome. Well, we're going to go listen to that now. And, and for those who are watching uh, the podcast on YouTube, uh, you'll see the music video as well. So here is Falling, which I co-wrote with my favorite co-songwriter, co Kano. So here's Falling.
falling. I'm thinking you and me should go all in. Shop a spree, stop by the mall in. Girl, you got them dribbling the way that you ball in. Throw it down between the legs. Show it down for the assist. Stick with me and you will see the way. Path is lit, candles in the bedroom, making all the sound there is. Yeah, with all the passion, the silence is just definite. I'm gonna make time stop, don't want it to ever end. Come on, hard because we're veterans. If you're falling for me, there's no reason to pretend. Better than the other men. You were diamond in the rough, you the rarest of the gems. You get hidden meaning more than I can comprehend. You're the end of the prayer, I'ma call you amen. Uh. Falling, falling, falling. too no I wasn't in it you know I've really done this whole thing where I used to be everything on stage and in everything and then the last kind of set of music videos I've decided I don't want to be in them (laughs) um it reminded me so Britney Spears and I think John Elton did a like a collab over the pandemic and they had these like interpretive dancers and it reminded me very similar of that that music I have to look it up yeah. John Elton or Elton John? No, wait, it's a different person. Elton John and, and Britney. And Britney Spears. I'll I'll take a look at it. Yeah, he's been doing a lot of remixes of his old songs. Maybe that's a Tiny Dancer. Could have been Tiny Dancer. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. Well, I'm glad you like the song. It certainly is part of the passion focus. And we get a lot of meaning in life through creativity and you know when we watch a movie or listen to a song or we watch a dance and it takes us out of the outside of our box and I try and bring a lot of creative creativity to my business like I'm a left and right brain thinker so if someone says Julie I need you to help us solve some business problems I'm always going to think outside of the box on the creative side you know so how do you do that? How do you, sh- how do you bring the creativity in your life and how do you bring that to, you know, your day, day job? I love that, Jilly. A bit meticulous about my routine. I have, mm-hmm. I have a morning routine. I need things to go in a certain way, you know, starting with my right. workout and, you know, pretty much any book about thinking big, I've probably read it and I've absorbed it. It's part of you know, rewriting that narrative. And this is who I am. This is how I'm going to show up. These are my mantras that I'm going to use. And this is who I am now. And I keep repeating that until it becomes me. That That's a part of me. And, you know, I just want to put a plug in. I don't want to derail, but um, May is Foster Care Awareness Month. I just feel a need to make a difference. And, you know, we're able to, and, you know, we've loved on nine kids um over the past couple of years and you know wow advocate so you know I need all parts of me to be you know moving in the direction I want to go and you know that that's one part of me I love speaking um I expect to you know deliver a couple talks this year yeah and and I've been watching your Instagram videos what a great (laughs) kickoff in that world as well yeah that's very creative you know that's thought leadership but it's creative like creating the videos you know a bit like building this podcast it's so creative and in putting it all together as well and then you get to share your thoughts and how your approaches right yeah. yeah how do you find the time with like the foster care the kids the 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 the, the husband the the workouts, the routine, the job where you show up and do multiple things. I think it's going to come down to it and your audience should know it like deep in their soul. Like if your why is is strong enough, you'll do anything to make it happen. Mm. Yeah. Which you should quote that. <laughs> Royce Bruce, if your why is strong enough, you can do anything. <laughs> yeah. So are there any um, like golden nuggets as we wrap up? that you'd like to share 
to our audience or anything else that we we should know about you that shares your story and, and your purpose and, and how we can learn from that. Yeah, I just want to take a moment to remind everyone. I know, you know, your listeners, they're high performers, they're getting after it. Um, anyone that, you know, knows Jilly is, you know, just an amazing leader in high tech. Um, I think this is a good reminder to reinforce that every moment we have to meet with someone, it's it's a moment to connect with them and you know, really make them feel heard and seen and valued, you know, yes, yes, there's always that push to achieve, 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 and you feel the pressure and you feel like you want to, you know, you're, you're just trying to like, how much more can I take, you know, as leaders, I just really encourage my teams and everyone that I talk to, like, you need to blow wind into people's sails you need to help them dream big. You need to help them see the potential of where their idea can go. Help enable and activate people's whys. We talked about you know, if your why is strong enough, you can really do anything. Let's keep you know pouring into to that, especially if you're in a position where you're able to. I think you've just nailed it insofar as like a true definition of leadership. It's not someone who just says, I'm the leader, everybody. We're going this direction. It is, I'm a leader and I'm enabling all of you and empowering all of you to take us in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. So where can people find you and come and see what you're doing? So I'm on socials. I have a website, JoyceRose.com, where you can see the latest on all my talks. Right now, I'm focused on self-belief um, technology, especially in the femtech sector as well as topics around PMO leadership. You can find me on Instagram and LinkedIn. Fantastic. Can you just spell out your Instagram if people just wanted to, if they're hearing it and they want to go find you on Instagram right now? It's Joyce, J-O-Y-C-E underscore Ruse. That's R-O-O-S as in Sam, Z as in Zebra. Great. Awesome. Thank you. It was a pleasure to have you today. Thank you for being a part of my creative world. I really appreciate it. And um, I hope that your network, your ad advocacy, your community endeavors, your work all pans out as it should. You've done so much um, and you're a great role model, um, you know, for those who want to believe in what they want to believe in and then go after that. And you apply so much discipline to that as well. Like you really have a structure on how you do it. And, you know, kudos to you. So I'm really, really glad that we had you on this podcast. Thanks, Jilly. Um, I'm, I'm so happy to be part of the creative. I honestly met amazing people through that and like-minded people, you know, that want to be, you know, the best in their areas of passion. So I'm so, so grateful to be part of it. That is, yeah, I'm so glad you're part of it. And for those who don't know about the creative, you can find it at the, T-H-E, creative, C-R-E-A-8-V-E dot com, thecreative.com or find us on Instagram, Facebook and uh, Twitter or whatever they're calling it now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Joyce, have a great weekend and really glad that, you know, we caught up. Um, thank you so much. Yeah. Talk to you soon. Bye. Come and join us at thecreative.com, C-R-E-A-8-B-E.com or find us on social or find me, Jilly Moon. See you soon.